Steve Wachowski Jr. here, your host on the Alfred Hitchcock Cinema. Long time, 75 years. And living here in Longmeadow. And a film buff. And here we go with an Alfred Hitchcock rarity. A musical. Harmony Heaven. The year was 1929. And this is similar to the other musical Alfred Hitchcock was involved with called Elstree Calling. For both musicals, Hitchcock did the non, directed the non musical numbers. His co director here was Thomas Bentley. He did all the musical numbers. So without further ado, let's go on to Harmony Heaven. I say, yes. Yes? I want to see the producer. Have you an appointment? Well, no. You see, my name's Farrell. I've just come from Little Wobblesweet to give the producer the first chance of hearing a song of mine. Yes, well, you've got a lovely day for it. It's the first week of rehearsing the new show, and he wouldn't listen to angels singing. Not unless they had an appointment. But you see, I... Do you mind standing aside, please? Sorry. Sorry? Dash clumsy. Eh? Letter for you, Mr. Short. Oh, thank you. Look, girl. That's Stuart. He's playing lead. I think he's marvelous, don't you? Yes. If he weren't such a swanker. <laughs> These society women really are the limit. Just look at this, girls. Sir, see your name in the paper as the leading part in Armony Evans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Will you kindly settle for the washing done? Two years. <laughs> <leave it. laughs> Six months owing and nothing but promises with three children to keep and one more on the way. Hoping <laughs> <laughs> this finds you the same. <laughs> you could sing like Robinson Crusoe himself. <laughs> now, if you was a dancer... A dancer? Well, what about it? Well, it just happened. 
I've got some men waiting for an audition. Yeah. See them. Boy, yes, sir. Put about to the block. Bill. Very good, sir. Back to places, girls. Now, hurry up. That's good, girls. Don't wait till I die. Still get a little left by side.
seems a bit downhearted, don't it? Poor kid. Cheer up, little Wibblewock. Were you there? Yes, I was at the fairies' tea party. Honestly, was it as bad as all that? Honestly, it was worse. Well, what would you do if you were me? Uh, I say, but that's my manuscript. That's the first thing you've got to forget. Forget? Yes. Are we going to be late? I suppose you're all right. Would you come and lunch with me? Well, I could. Do you know the Ritz? The Ritz? <laughs> oh, don't be silly. The Ritz can wait. You'll come and have some chicken and chips with me. But I asked you. Do come. I'm going to give you a tip or two that you'll never learn in little uh, sing me walk <laughs> People nowadays don't want to waste a lot of time over poetry and stuff about fairies and the moon. You leave that to the highbrows. You know, Bob, what you ought to do is to write a real song that a real man would sing to a real girl that he was in love with. See? But, Miss... Uh... Billy? Billy, I don't think it's going to be so difficult. Now.
about that, my boy? I ain't got but a grain. Oh, the 
Trouble over this. Oh, it's 
shoot again. I'll kill him one of these days. Oh, I should if I were you. Then, of course, you'll be able to go on and play his part. Well, can't I you? could. Clever little thing. Someone in the gallery kept on calling out for Owen Nairs. He wasn't even in the show. I say, that's a good-looking little filly down there. She's one of the worst to best-dressed women in London. Uh, what do you think? Who am I to express an opinion? <laughs> May I join you, Lady Violet? Oh, yes, do. It's so thrilled. Uh, nice bit of stuff down there in the box. Where? Down there. Nice cream cheese, you can why, that's Lady Violet Misley, where I used to work. I was a lady's maid. Program of chocolates? Go on, you told me you was a chambermaid. No, I never. Ice cream and ginger beer? Chocolate? There's nice goings on. I can tell you the things I shove you to tell me. Program? Oh, eh? Oh, woo! Bastard. <laughs> <laughs>
I've got it. Send him out to sing his own number. That's all that matters. Good. Hi, Farrell. Come here. Go on and sing your own number. Hello. Hello. Is that you, John, old boy? Put on That's All That Matters. What? Stuart's new number? That doesn't go on till the next day. It goes on now. All that matters. That's all that matters. Good night, 
Come in. <laughs> I've got a good story for you. Oh? Congratulations. Yes. Thanks. I'm going to sign this young man up. I made up my mind to do so after the first night. Forget that, Stella. I'm going to discover him in tomorrow morning's paper. Mm. So much the better. Lady Violet Mitchley asked me to say that she'd like you to go to supper. Says she remembers your father, Colonel Parr. But my father wasn't a colonel. Now, look here, my lad. If she says your father was a colonel, he was. Let it go at that and go to supper. Lady Violet is one of the biggest swells in London. What about evening clothes? Oh, that's all right. Wear your second act costume. Well, George, we'll okay. see you later. You coming along, Spiller? Yes, I'm coming along. Yes. I'm, uh... Ah, come on in, Billy. Good evening, Mr. Spiller. I'm sorry, Bob, I thought you were late. Oh, come on in. This is Bob's receiving line. Bob, I've arranged a wonderful party. Monica's coming and Betty and Beatrice. We're all going to the nightlife. We're going to start and dance. But, Billy, I... Why, what's the matter? Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, Bob's feel... a social success now. Haven't you heard Lady Violet Mystery is taking him up? Why, why... A man needs a woman like that at the back of him. Maybe Violet. Oh, I see. Well, good night, everybody. Have a good time, Bob. we're going out to supper tonight. Why, no, of course not. But you see, Spiller insists on my going up to his place. The new show, uh, Eve's Apple. Come in. Lady Violet's car for you, sir. I thought you said you were going out to Spiller. But you see, dear... Listen, Bob, let's get this straight. You've been fooling me for weeks and making lying excuses and hiding around corners and seeing that other woman. Understand once and for all, if you go to that woman tonight, it's all over. You understand? It's goodbye. Well, if that's your attitude, there's nothing further to be said. But if your idea of helping me with my success is to spy on me and insult the people who are doing their best to make me a success... Helping you? <laughs> I know her game. There's no necessity to be vulgar. You tell her that! Glad. Oh, yes. <laughs> Bob, I've something to say to you. I must see you later. <laughs> Come on, Bob. I shoot, he's going to see it. Is she? Yeah.
heart Left a little comical heart Went to learn the prehistoric blues Though they had no saxophone men Cues were played on marathon then When they danced the prehistoric blues never coming home. Sorry I couldn't let you know I'd be late. You better eat it before it gets stone cold. Oh, I don't want anything. I'm going out again. Why not, miss? Do you know what the time is? Oh, what do I care? Well, this is a bit of all right. Here have I been trying to keep you something nice and hot. Oh, Suggs, be quiet. I've got to hurry up and change. Of course, it's not for me to say, miss, but it does seem a funny time for going out. Why shouldn't I go out if I like? What's it got to do with anybody? Nobody cares. Billy. It's true. You shouldn't say that, miss. I'm sorry. I hears and sees a lot of things in that little cubby hole of mine. And I haven't been on the stage door for 15 years without learning a thing or two. Did you ever learn that what's good for the good? I know, I know. But Bob is young. And it takes a big man to have a big success and not have a big head at the start. It's only vanity. Why, when I started life, I was a call boy. And rose and rose till I became a stage doorkeeper. But I was like all the rest of them. When I got my first promotion, I was a perfect Don Juno. But what's that got to do with me? Just this. You're a nice girl. Bob's not a bad boy. But you'd be a pair of young fools to let yourself be unhappy. He's enjoying himself. Why shouldn't I? I want just to have a little talk with you. Well, you must hurry, Mr. Suggs. Mm. Come in, please. Hello? Yes, this is Bob Farrell speaking. What is it, Suggs? She's unconscious, but still breathing. Where is she at home? 
I'll come over at once. Hush. She's still unconscious. Is she breathing? Billy! Billy, speak to me! Was the honest truth I told you? You old rascal. Dear old son. about my fare. Heaven was Britain's first all-talking color film. Unfortunately, only the black and white print has survived. That's it. <laughs>